we've been getting into a lot of uh, uh, spiritual warfare. We've been getting into a lot of uh, understanding of the spirit realm. And it's important that we continue on with certain things. And, and one of the things that must be established as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ is we must renew our mind. Now, that's our responsibility. Our mind is must be renewed. And uh, renewing the mind is a process that we go through. <clears throat> and, uh, and initially, there's something that happens to me and you when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. And uh, Jesus came himself and declared what the essence of renewing the mind is. And if we'll turn to uh, John 16 and verse 7. If we'll go there, John 16 and verse 7. Hallelujah. It's in the Gospels. John 16, verse 7. I want to start there. <clears throat> is everybody there? Now this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And one of the essence of renewing the mind is to know the truth. Does everybody get it? To renew the mind, you must know the truth. <laughs> and in John 16 and verse 7, it states, Nevertheless, now this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the what? Truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will, I will send him to you. Now, the Helper is known as the Holy Spirit, isn't he? Amen. Now, he is known as the Spirit of Truth as we continue on in, in this verse. So, one of the essences of renewing the mind is knowing the truth. Does everybody understand that? It? it is so important. In verse 8, he says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. And who's the ruler of this world? Amen. Satan. I still have many things to say to you. But you cannot what? Bear them now. Why? Because he knew they would not understand the truth. And they couldn't hold on to the truth. Because the helper who was going to declare the truth to them had not been imparted in them yet. And verse 13, However, he says, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Does everybody understand that? The Holy Spirit does not speak on his own authority. And you'll see why. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. And what's he going to declare to him, to me and you? The truth. the truth. And the truth is an essence, like I said, of renewing the mind. Because without knowing the truth, our mind stays in deception. Does everybody get it? Okay. Go to John 14. Go back a couple chapters. And remember it says that, and the Helper will come to you, and he will not speak on his own authority, but what he hears. Now, why is he going to speak on what he hears? And in verse 6 it says, let's read this together. And Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. Well, if he is the way, and He is the truth and the life. That means He is also is the Spirit of truth. Does everybody understand that? That's why the Holy Spirit will not speak on His own, but what He hears because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. Does everybody get it? So He's not going to just speak on His own. He's going to speak because He is the Spirit of Christ. He is the anointing. Is everybody with me? Okay. And the Spirit, now listen to this, Jesus is the Spirit that guides me and you, isn't He? Did not the Spirit of truth manifest in the natural realm? So Jesus came to guide His people, didn't He? Known as the way also, didn't He? He also told them the truth, didn't He? And as they walked in the truth, He gave them life. And the Bible says that the Spirit gives life, doesn't it? So we see that one of the essences 
of renewing your mind and my mind is to know the truth. To know the truth. Amen? Now, let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4, I think. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Is everybody there? And in verse 3, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3. Let's read this together. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So their minds are blinded. Your mind and my mind was blinded by the ruler of this world, wasn't it? It was blinded. Now go back a little bit to 2 Corinthians 3. Okay, and let's start at verse 15. But even to this day when Moses has read, the veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, his veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we see that the veil is taken away. The blinders are removed when the Holy Spirit comes upon me and you. So everybody get it? So that we are able to see. So we're able to receive the things of truth. Because without truth, we're no longer free. We're still blinded, aren't we? Okay, let's go a little further. And 1 Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. So we know that the ruler of this world has been blinding me and you for a long time. That's why we walked in the ways we did. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Now when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you'll realize that the veils have been removed. That's why there are still a lot of believers that are out there that have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior and they're still blinded. They have partial truths, don't they? But the Word tells us that the Holy Spirit will guide us to all truths. So that's why there's something wrong, isn't there? They're not being guided to all truth because they do not have the Holy Spirit who guides us to all truth. And without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the veil still remains on the believer. So they're only walking in partial truth, aren't they? They are walking in what they are told and not what they are led. Amen? Amen? Okay. So we see here now, let's go to verse 12, and it says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, which is known as the Spirit of Antichrist, but the Spirit who is from God, that we what? Might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So that means that you and I have a choice, don't we? That's why the word says might. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we see here, without fellowship and without being baptized in the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit, we will not know truth or the things that have been freely given to me and you. Amen? Okay. Let's go on. But the, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's why there are still believers. Hello? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not accusing or anything. I'm sharing this truth. That's why there are still believers that things of the Spirit are foolishness to them because they've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost and they have not those veils haven't been taken off. Now, you must understand that the devil's purpose is to put the veils back on, even after you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Those veils, veils still, can, those blinders still, can still can come back on. Amen? In fact, many people you find who have backslidden, the devil blind, blinded them, pushed them out of position, and, re, and, and, and slid in a, a deception of belief where they bit the bait and went astray. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, verse 15, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now the mind of Christ, because he is the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, carries truth with him, doesn't he? 
But we have a choice to receive this truth, don't we? So the mind is renewed by truth. Does everybody understand it? It is so important. The mind is renewed by truth. Go to Proverbs 23. Hallelujah. In Proverbs 23. Glory, hallelujah. Proverbs 23. And in verse 23. Glory to God. Is everybody there? Proverbs 23 and verse 23. And let's read this together. What's the first word it says? Buy. Buy. Hello. That means there's a price, isn't there? That means there's a choice. If there's a price, there's always a choice. Does everybody get it? If there's a price, there's always a choice. Jesus paid the price for me and you, didn't he? He had a choice, didn't he? It says what? Buy the truth and do not sell it. In other words, do not sell it or do not make an exchange for it or do not sell it for a, a, a lie. Does everybody get it? So you and I are to buy the truth. We are making a choice to receive and acknowledge and go after the truth and not give it away. Why? Because holding on to the truth maintains the renewed mind. Does everybody get it? Okay, let's go to John 8. John chapter 8. <laughs> it's quiet in here tonight. What's up? <laughs> oh, we're going to renew the mind. We're going to understand the renewing of the mind. John chapter 8. So we see one of the things of renewing the mind I want to share is I'm going to just lay down a few things. And the first number one thing we're talking about, of course, is truth. We must know truth, right? And we also must know that we must be baptized in the Holy Ghost, which brings the mind of Christ, doesn't it? Okay. Okay, in John 8.31. 8.31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? make you free. So if you're his disciple, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, his word is going to abide in you. So we understand here that we must acknowledge his word of truth, but we must rightly divide the word of God because there are many people who have the word of God in them but don't have the truth. Is everybody with me? They might have the word of God in them, but they don't understand what the word of God is meaning. There is not an understanding, is there? That's why the Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit brings life. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans 12. Romans 12. So we see that walking in the truth will constantly make you and me free. Now let me share something with you. Free from what? Free from the lie and the deception of the world. Free from bondages, because that's what the world is trying to bring on us, isn't it? Bondage all over again. And Romans 12. Is everybody there? Let's start at verse 1 and read it together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we must, our mind must be renewed so that we can prove what is the will of God. See, it's your choice and my choice. In fact, it's our purpose to renew our mind so that we can prove to the world what is the will of God. Does everybody get it? In fact, the truth will become manifest in you. It will begin to manifest. By what? By performing the perfect will of God. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. Go to 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Am I going too fast? Praise God, we got a tape. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 John 4. <laughs> so we must get the Word of God in us. We must have the Holy Spirit who declares the truth to us of what the true understanding of the word is, right? Okay. In 1 John chapter 4, and in verse 4. Glory to God. 1 John 4, verse 4. And let's read this together, please. It says, 
You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Wow. Well, <laughs> we see the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, right? Now, it also states that we are not of the world. Did you ever notice that wherever you are, you might be at work, you might be with old family members, you might, and they've got a lot of things to speak about of the world. And it's like, you don't really have too much to say. You know, you find yourself quiet. You know, it's amazing because when my wife and I go out somewhere, we'll be at dinner or we go to a function or, or something, or, or we go to a family, and she, she like looks at me and goes, man, you know what? You're so quiet. Because there isn't anything I have to say. Sometimes there's just, you know, people get in conversations and I just, there's nothing I can say. Because what I have to say, they don't want to hear. Because I know the truth. And the truth has constantly made me free. Constantly made me free from the entanglements of the affairs of the world. Allowed me to walk in the truth and in freedom. And there is a great freedom. You know, when I went and ministered to the men that are on death row last week, one of the things that we shared with them that even though that they're in jail, they're not. They're free. They've been in jail their whole life by the bondages of the world. But now they are free because they have the truth. And the truth has made them free by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 5. While we're out here. In verse 18. Is everybody there? In verse 18. And let's read it together. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Now let me share something with you. <laughs> the only way the wicked one touches you is if you let him. <laughs> the only way he touches me and you is if we let him. Let's go on. Is everybody there? Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the, the wicked one. So the whole world lies under the lies of the wicked one, doesn't it? So he's always trying to draw me and you out from underneath Christ to get under his lies. Does everybody get that? In verse 20, and we, and we know what? That the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son Jesus Christ this is the true god and eternal life remember we talked about Jesus declaring that he was the way truth and life and that he was going to send the spirit of truth which is actually him <laughs> him hallelujah and proverbs 23 no 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 let's go to proverbs 4 Proverbs 4. Renewing the mind. Proverbs 4. Oh, I got a lot to say about renewing the mind, says the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Proverbs 4. Is everybody there? Amen. Good. I'm there now. And in verse 20. Okay. It looks like Proverbs 4 anyways. Yeah, let's try it. Let's read it together. My son, give attention to my words and climb your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. What's life to those? The what? The word. Mm. And we talked about renewing our mind with the what? Word. word. So it's life to us, isn't it? Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, truth, and life. So he's also known as the word, isn't he? Does everybody see this? Yeah. Come on, he is everything. He's everything. Let's go to Proverbs 23. 
You know, one of the things we must understand, every lie, is everybody with me? All lies are the basis of every negative thought. Whoa. All the lies that the devil shoots at me and you are the basis of every negative thought. In Proverbs 20, uh, I'm sorry, are we there? Proverbs 23 and verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. Wait a minute. Is a miser under a truth or under a lie? He's under a lie. That's why he says don't associate with him. Listen. Let's go to the next verse. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Now, does everybody get that? So if the devil convince you, so you will be. Does everybody get that? So if he can stop the renewing of your mind and convince you, so you will be. Whatever he's telling you. Does everybody get that? That's why people go astray, don't they? They actually receive the lie from the devil brings a negative thought, brings them under the sway. They begin to think on this and ponder on this. All of a sudden, they believe it and they, it is what they are. In other words, what you think is what you are. Does everybody get it? What you think is what you are. Oh, man, I can't do this and you won't. <laughs> man, I'm sick. I'm going to end up dead and you will. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Why? Because the mind must be constantly renewed. It's not a one-time effect. It's called the renewing of your mind. So your mind and my mind must be constantly being renewed. Amen? Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel, of, the morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. <laughs> Let's go to 3 John. 3 John. 3 John. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Renewing the mind. Now the Bible says that the devil comes and steals the seed, doesn't he? And he likes to come and steal the truth, doesn't he? In 3 John. <clears throat> Let's start at verse 2. to 4. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Now, why he's saying, I pray that you will prosper in all things and be in, in, in health, just as your soul prospers. So what is he saying? He's saying, listen, you're not going to prosper in all things and you're not going to be in good health unless your soul prospers. Does everybody get it? Now, the head of the soul is the mind. The head of the soul is the mind. In fact, the soul is made of the mind, the will, and the emotions. Does everybody get it? Or I should say the mind, emotions, and will. The head of the soul is the mind. Does everybody get that? It's so important. Amen. So it's so important. If the mind is not renewed, you're not going to prosper, are you? And you're not going to be in good health. In verse 3, For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth, that is in you just as you walk in the truth. In other words, they're walking in... You can't walk in, in the truth unless your mind is being renewed. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth or walk in a renewed mind or known as the mind of Christ. Amen? In First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Let's read this together. Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely. Now listen. He's saying may the God of peace sanctify you completely, not partially but completely. And he's going to explain what three parts need to be sanctified. And may your what? Whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful who will also do it. Now, now, what is being sanctified? Three parts. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. 
Now we just shared that and without renewing of the mind, you will not prosper nor will you have good health. So we see that these things, these three parts which you, are, you and I are made of is the spirit, soul, and body, right? And God, he's saying here they must be presented blameless. Blameless. Well, if your mind isn't renewed, you're not going to walk in a blameless way, are you? Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luvia robakasha tarakasi kieramoso. Renewing your mind. 1 Peter 1 and verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, guard, put up a wall, put a protection around it. Strengthen it. What does it say? Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conform yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. Why? What does he say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's in Hosea 4, 6. And verse 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. So, you know what? We can tell whether people are walking in the renewed mind of Christ by their conduct, can't we? Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Praise be to God. So we need to gird up our mind with the things of the mind of Christ. Do you understand? It's our responsibility every day. It's like turning on a light switch, isn't it? The light doesn't go off until the switch is hit. So we must constantly renew our mind. By what? The Word of God. By knowing the truth. By not allowing ourselves to be blinded in the lies and deceits of the world. By departing from evil. Amen? Like I said, there are times you'll find that you don't have much to say when you're out in the world until the Holy Ghost tells you what to say. As, well, now, if you got a brother there that's messing up, you know the Holy Ghost got a lot to say. <laughs> like you're going to die. <laughs> Get right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 10. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Amen. Hallelujah. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now where are these arguments? In the mind. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. See, you can't punish it unless you've been, you're fulfilling, your, in other words, you're not, if you're not obedient, how can you punish something? Does everybody understand? In other words, you can't take dominion unless you're obedient. That's why God says, submit to God and resist the devil and he'll flee. So unless you're obedient, you can't take dominion. That's why many people have a hard time walking in the mind of Christ or renewing in the mind of Christ. And of course, they're being disobedient, being taken away by desires of their own desires, not the desires of Christ. Because they be, they're listening to the voice of the stranger and being taken captive. And see, you got to understand, you got to be quick, quickened in the spirit that know that when there becomes an argument in the mind, you got to cast that down and depart. Does everybody get it? You must cast that down and depart. Plead the blood of Jesus, rebuke it, do your spiritual warfare. Why? So that the mind of Christ, the renewing in the mind of Christ, will constantly be renewed. Remember, the devil's always going to try and bring you, well, what if? <laughs> well, why? But the Bible says God's ways and thoughts are much higher than ours, aren't they? 
You and I are, it's our responsibility to just stay in the truth. If you'll stay in the truth and not get pushed out of the truth, your mind will constantly be renewed by the Spirit of God and you won't be swayed. Because the ruler of this world is swaying people of lies. Remember the matrix of the lies of this world. Getting caught up. Praise God. So it's our responsibility to what? Cast down thoughts and imaginations. Let me tell you, when that argument begins to come, shut it up. <laughs> you know, when somebody begins to argue with you, you walk away, don't you? There's no sense of throwing wood on the fire because <laughs> it's not going to get anywhere. So just walk away. Amen. And walk away in the thoughts. Cast those thoughts down. Hallelujah. And Romans 7. Renewing your mind. Oh, truth renews your mind. Glory to God. In Romans 7. In verse 22. Everybody there? Amen. In Romans 7, verse 22. Praise be to God. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Now, the law of God is known as the Word of God. So everybody get that. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. This is someone that already has got a renewing of the mind. Does everybody understand that? He's not talking to an unbeliever. He's talking to believers. He's giving the example of himself. Paul was born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, wasn't he? And what is he saying? He's saying, man, I realize that there's a war my members warring against the, the law or the, the word in my mind that's been implanted. I realize that there's a war, a war. That's why in Corinthians he wrote the letter that you have to cast down these thoughts and imaginations. There are these arguments that come from the war in your members are coming against the mind of Christ. Hello? Now listen. Here we go again. Let me read this over again. Verse 23. But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So we see here if we yield to this argument, it's going to bring us into sin, isn't it? Because the whole purpose of the argument is to move us out of position of the mind of Christ and bring us into the carnal mind. And we know that those who are led by the carnal mind will die. Amen? Is everybody with me? Okay. Oh, let's go a little further. What does he say? O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So we don't want to walk in the flesh, do we? We want to walk in the Spirit. Let's go to Romans 8. In verse 26. Romans 8, verse 26. Hallelujah. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. For whom he foreknew, oh, I'm sorry, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So we see here that praying in the Holy Ghost renews the mind. Why? Because it's searching the mind of the Spirit, isn't it? And he begins to reveal it to me and you. Why? So that we can understand the Word. Is everybody with me? So praying in the Holy Ghost is important. You think that the devil doesn't want you to pray in the Spirit? You know why people get sucked back? Let me share something with you. You know why people get sucked back into self? Get sucked back into woe is me? Get sucked back? Because they don't pray in the Holy Ghost enough. And they read the Word, 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 they read the Word. But they don't get understanding because they don't pray in the Holy Ghost enough. Does everybody get it? Why? Because the Spirit searches the mind of the Spirit, doesn't he? So he, the, so that the mind is, mind of Christ can be formed in me and you. So without praying on the Holy Ghost, it makes it a little bit difficult, doesn't it? Hello? So we must pray in the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 10. And in this I give advice, it is to your advantage. This advice is to our advantage. Not only to 
be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago. But now you also must complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. What is he saying? Complete what you started. Doesn't the devil want to prevent you from completing what? What? Stop fulfilling what the mind of Christ is in me and you. Now here it is. In verse 12, let's read this together. For if there is first, would you underline the word first, a willing mind. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. Now the devil always wants to bring you to what you don't have, isn't he? But first there must be a willing mind. So we must see here that there is a choice. You must you know what? You're the steward of all the gifts, aren't you? You are a steward of the mysteries of God. You are a steward. So you are the steward of the mind of Christ. You have dominion. You must first have a willing mind. So you must take dominion. Amen? And Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Glory, hallelujah. And verse 1. Philippians 2 and verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others, each others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Why? That's the mind of Christ, isn't it? And here it is, verse 5. It says, let's read this together. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. <laughs> so the mind of Christ must be in me and you, who is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Let's go to chapter 3. In verse 18. Chapter 3 and verse 18. Glory to God. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and his glory is in their shame, who set their mind on what? Earthly things. You know, I know that there is a border, and we have a teaching on a border, <laughs> but there is a, a fine line where you must stop your mind from being set on earthly things or you get sucked in. <laughs> you get sucked in. And let me tell you something. If you allow it to go any further, for a period of time, a demon enters. The spirit of the world begins to enter again. Does everybody get it? If you set your mind on the things of the world, why? Because it just talked about, um, he was just talking about and how people went astray because they began to set their mind on earthly things. If you do that for a period of time, a demon will enter and you have to be delivered from that. Same thing of what, how, you know, you and I must be careful what we see, what we hear, what we, you know, so forth, where we go. People watching certain things and reading certain books that they shouldn't be reading all of a sudden turns their focus Onto the things of the world, and the spirit will enter, not a, no, not the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, where are we now? Um, Philippians, what? Three, three. We're on twenty now. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Let's read it. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that is that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. And praise be to God. Praise be to God. Now, let's go to Second John. Don't set your mind on earthly things. Second John. You know, you'll find yourself that you, all of a sudden, you know, the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing. Hello? but in all things, prayer and supplication. So, when you become anxious for something, you know what's happening? You're being swayed. You're being swayed. 
on earthly things. Because when you and I were in the world, we were anxious for everything. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And I'm not saying that you're not going to get anxious about something, but you must take dominion over it. The mind of Christ must be activated to take dominion over it so that you do not make a mistake. And I'm not saying we're not going to make mistakes. Hello? But so you don't get in trouble. That's why we're to lay all things before the Lord. And next thing we know, we're putting our mind on earthly things. And it gets harder to come back into the spirit of things, doesn't it? <laughs> Second Timothy chapter one. Aren't you glad you brought an eraser? <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter one. Glory to God. Second Timothy chapter one. And verse six. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And verse seven. For God has not given us a what? Spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a... You know what? This qualifies the renewing of your mind. Fear. Fear grips us. When fear grips us, bam! It's sucked into the carnal mind. When fear grips us. Why? Because it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. So when fear grips us, we lose the love, we lose the power, and we lose the sound mind, don't we? <clears throat> that renewed mind seems to be put on hold for a second, doesn't it? Let's go to Romans 8. Fear is a disqualifier of the mind of Christ. In Romans 8, at least that's what he tries to do anyway. For we know he who is in us is greater than he is in the world. But did you ever notice that fear freezes you? Uh, the mind of Christ is frozen. Uh, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit brings things to remembrance. What does He bring to remembrance? He brings the Word of God to remembrance. If you've been praying in the Spirit more, if you've been walking in the Spirit more, you won't freeze. <clears throat> in Romans 8, verse 5, <clears throat> For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Yeah. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And peace. See, so you're going to know about peace, aren't you? It's not about accomplishments. It's about the mind of Christ being activated that is leading me and you in peace. You know, when I... When I feel confusion coming or I feel frustration coming or something, I know that there's an attack, that there, the, the, there's a war coming against the mind of Christ, that there's something going on, and I must wait. I can't just go ahead and do something. I must wait. So that the mind of Christ can be activated and I can get counsel from the Holy Ghost to know what to do. Amen? Amen. We want that spiritual mind. To walk in the spiritual mind of Christ means that you will walk in the will of God. To reject the spiritual mind of Christ means that you're rejecting the will of God. In Hebrews 8. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 8. Is everybody there? In verse 10. Now, this was prophesied. <clears throat> and verse 10 it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my what? Laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Well, you know what? The Bible says the anointing that is in me and you will teach us. And we need no man to teach us. Now, he's talking about a carnal man. Does everybody understand that? Because we know that God says that there are offices and there are teachers and so forth, but it's all done by the Spirit of God. So Jesus came as in the Spirit, didn't he? He was a manifested Spirit and he taught, but he was known as a life-giving Spirit, wasn't he? Okay, so we see here that even the law was put in there. This was prophesied that the law would be put in their mind. And the law is put in your mind and my mind 
by the presence of the Holy Spirit and by the reading of the Word, which with understanding we are able to maintain and walk in the renewing of the mind of Christ. Not, not being conformed to the world, but being transformed. Being transformed. So it's not an instantaneous thing, is it? But there is something that opens up, isn't there, so that you and I can receive. When the mind of, because it's just like training. The Holy Spirit's got to train me and you on what the mind is, doesn't he? Or what the will of God is. The will of God is the mind of Christ, isn't it? Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33. And like I shared before, we must be careful of where we go, what we do, what we say. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Hallelujah. So, let me share this with you, which is important. When we get into a circumstance where, where fear comes, in other words, we have to make a decision. Do you notice how fear begins to grip some? Sometimes it begins to come in there because the devil knows that you have to make a decision. He's trying to prevent me and you from making the decision in the spirit. Does everybody get it? So when you don't know what to do yet, you wait. You wait. And the Holy Spirit will give you the answer in peace. And there's so many times when something comes up, it's like, man, Lord, I need your help. And he says, I'm trying to bring it to you. Be quiet. <laughs> Cast down those thoughts and imaginations. Rest in me. I'll, I'll give, I'm, I'm bringing it to you. I'm faithful to deliver it to you. I'm faithful to guide you. Just ask me. I'm faithful. And if we'll just wait, He will. Won't He? He will. In 1 Corinthians 15.33 And let's read this together. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Evil company corrupts what? Good, Good habits. Let's go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. <clears throat> We've heard this psalm over and over and over. But praise be to God. <laughs> Let's read this in verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And is the world ungodly? Yes. And you think the devil's trying to bring you all ungodly counsel. Amen. You will know that ungodly counsel because you won't have peace. Unless you're so far in the carnal, does everybody get it? You've already lost your peace and you're used to walking with not that peace. People who backslide are not walking in the peace, are they? They're searching, searching, searching for an answer. And are receiving ungodly counsel because they're walking not in the peace of God and waiting on God. They're walking in the carnal mind. That always gives you the clue. No peace, no mind of Christ. No peace, no mind of Christ. Amen. Who walks not in the counsel of the, godly, of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The mind of Christ will not speak the things of the world. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and, he, and in his law he meditates day and night. Let me share something with you. You will always seek counsel of the Spirit through his word. Everything that you and I are doing, no matter what it is, we are always asking the Spirit of God, is this of you? And how do you want me to bring glory to your name? Two things happened to Saul when the Lord appeared to him. He said, you're Lord and what do you want me to do? You're the Lord, and what do you want me to do? Amen? Amen? Everything, even at your work, we're to labor on to the Lord. We're to labor on to the Lord. Yes, we must pay bills. Yes, there's things, but are you laboring on to the Lord or are you laboring on to yourself? Where's your mind at? Is it in the mind of Christ or the mind of self? Are you concerned? Are you more concerned about paying your bills or laboring to God? That's where you know. And if you've gotten so caught up in paying bills, because the devil has deceived you and moved you out of the mind of Christ and put you in the carnal mind and, in the, and the desires of earthly things and he's put you in debt. So you're concerned more about working because you've got to pay the debts off instead of working and laboring onto the Lord knowing that the finances are going to help build the kingdom of God. Is everybody with me? Amen. Hallelujah. And in his law he meditates day and night. Remember, where they have earth uh, heavenly treasures, not earthly treasures. And he shall be like a what? Tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does will 
prosper. Why? Because he's walking in the mind of Christ. That's why God wants you or my mind renewed in the renewing of the mind of Christ, constantly renewing. It's an everyday thing. You can't wake up in the morning with yesterday's mind. <laughs> you must renew your mind every single morning and during the day. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Um, so we want to meditate on the Word, don't we? In other words, how do we handle issues? His way tells us things. Filling our thoughts with the Word of God. We must program our mind and deprogram it from the ways of the world. That's our choice. Amen. It doesn't mean that it's what I call mind, um, mind control or whatever. It's not that. You're not being washed or brainwashed. You're being renewed. Being renewed. Amen? Praise be to God. Let's go to Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Hallelujah. Renewing of your mind. Do you ever notice that something you, you saw or something you heard or, uh, or something somebody said that you were around that was ungodly? You notice how it tries to penetrate you? <clears throat> you know, I, I, and it's trying to penetrate you. It's trying to penetrate you. It's trying to penetrate you. Because what it, the devil's trying to do is use that seed to corrupt the mind. He's trying to plant that seed to move you astray from the renewing of the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And Philippians 4 and verse 8. Is everybody there? Let's read this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. <laughs> now listen, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these things do, and the God of what? Peace will be with you. Hello? That's what's so important, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. So we want to meditate on these things, the things of truth. We want to depart from evil. We want to be planted in the Word of God. We want to stay filled with the Spirit of God that the mind of Christ can constantly be renewed. We want to encourage one another of the renewing of the mind of Christ. The renewing of the mind of Christ must be on an everyday basis. Amen? We must be careful of what we hear, what we see, where we go. All of these things we must be careful of. Amen? Because we want the constant renewing of the mind of Christ. The essence of the renewing of the mind of Christ is truth. Does everybody get that? Truth. Truth. Now I want to close with the scripture, Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4. Glory to God. <laughs> Ephesians 4. Is everybody there? Amen. Praise be to God. In verse, let's see here. Verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk and the fatility of their mind, having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God. Do you understand without the mind of Christ being renewed, your mind being renewed and walking in the mind of Christ, you will become alienated from God. Amen? Isn't that what happened before to us? Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who be in past feelings. So you can't go by your feelings, can you? Because that's a part of that soul that needs to be renewed. But what is the head of the soul? The mind having given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of uncleanliness with greediness. Remember, isn't greediness a part of earthly yeah. desires? But you have not learned Christ, or he's saying, but you have not allowed the mind of Christ to be formed in you. If indeed you have heard him and they have been taught by him, is the what? Truth. truth is in Jesus. The essence of the mind of Christ is truth. That you what? Put off. Now wait a minute. Who puts off? Do you understand choice again? 
that you put off concerning your former conduct. See, you have the dominion and ability and power to say no, don't you? That's all you have to do is say no and allow the mind of Christ to kick in. The old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be what? Renewed in the mind of the spirit. We be remo renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we are the stewards of the renewing of the mind of Christ, aren't we? Amen? So gird it up, stir it up, and pick it up. Amen? And turn it up. <laughs> and to God be the glory. And constantly remain in the position where your mind is being renewed. Let it not get sucked in. Take dominion. Take dominion in the captivity of those ungodly thoughts, those arguments that come against you, that war against your mind. Cast it out. Throw it out. Put it under your feet. And speak the word. Speak the word. That's why it's so important about speaking the word. Because you're renewing your mind by speaking the word. Speaking Amen. the word. Amen. One other thing in, a, in um, Psalm 133, if you'll turn there. One other thing I wanted to share. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 133. Holy Ghost just quickened me to this, so I must be obedient. Psalm 133. So are you there? Amen. Did you ever notice that you could be out and about, right? And all of a sudden you come into a group of believers, all of a sudden the mind of Christ starts working. <laughs> all of a sudden it's like the carnal mind begins to shut down a little bit and the mind of Christ begins to start working with all, nobody saying nothing. Hey, how are you doing? God bless you. Yeah. All of a sudden, wow, the, the mind of Christ begins to start getting activated, doesn't it? Because in Psalm 133 it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head. Upon the what? Head. See, when you begin to dwell together in unity, all of a sudden the mind of Christ begins to get activated again. The Holy Ghost begins to uh, quicken you to the things. Running down the beard, running down the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments, it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, what? Life forevermore. Why? Because dwelling together begins to activate the mind of Christ and the mind of Christ is a representation of the Spirit of Christ which brings life. Amen? Amen? So it's so good. That's why it's so important about worship, isn't it? Hallelujah. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for Your counsel, Your correction. And we thank You for Your direction. Lord, empower us to have the sensitivity and discernment that when we are being sucked out by the carnal mind that we can have the power to say no, that we can come back in and make the choice and let the mind of Christ be renewed in us on a daily basis, constantly setting our mind and our thoughts of how to bring glory to your name and expand your kingdom and not get sucked into the things of the world. Lord, we give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. Let the word of God become food to us, Lord, and make us thirsty and hungry for the renewing of the mind. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory.